Hey guys, welcome back to the FFP. It's time for part one of our week eight start sit video. As always, I'm gonna break this into two videos simply to give us a little bit more time to get to that Monday night information. Hopefully we'll then find out a little bit more or even about the later night Sunday games. So we'll be doing the Thursday and the noon games today. That is the majority of the games, I believe a little over half. Um, but we talked about doing this video and you know, combining them and not doing two parts. It's not going to work out this week simply because Rob has four funerals to do this week. It's a very crazy and very sad time. Uh, we know all of those people who passed away, and it's been very difficult going through that. So Rob is going to focus on that. But I'm still here to do this because you know I'm excited to talk football. It's a nice escape for me, and it helps me to not worry about the things that are going on. So let's just get right into it. Oh, and one more funny thing. Sorry. Uh, one more funny thing before we get into it. If you want to like skip 30 seconds ahead or whatever, just go for it. Who cares? But uh, David Fennell doing a great job adding the timestamps to our videos. I said, hey, message us on Facebook, and he did, and then I realized I haven't been able to message him back, but I think I have an automated reply system set up on there, which basically tells people to not message us on Facebook, but instead message us through YouTube. Um, so sorry for sending you back and forth there and being an idiot. I, I'm not a very smart guy, I guess, but uh, things have been a little crazy and, and haven't really had my mind too much on on some of this football stuff, but really got into it today, just had hours of research time. It was kind of nice, so, you know, a little bit stressful trying to catch up on some of that information, but let's get right into it with the first of our games. All right, so the two bye weeks this, or the two teams on bye week this week are the Ravens and the Raiders. We'll get into our first game Thursday night, Packers at Cardinals. This should be a fun matchup to watch. The Packers are pretty good, but man, there's no arguing with the Cardinals right now. They are phenomenal. They're playing lights out. Let's start off with them. You have to start Kyler Murray. He's currently third in fantasy quarterback scoring, and there's something that's really impressed me more than that. Here's what really stands out. He hasn't had more than 10 rushing yards in a game in his last three games, and yet he does have seven touchdowns in his last two. So we've really seen something. Kyler Murray, we know he's a mobile quarterback. He has got wheels. That dude can buy time and make plays. He's he's really up there. Probably not as good, but he's really up there with guys like Lamar Jackson and their ability to run. But he also proved he doesn't need to run to do it. So that's been a lot of fun to watch. Kyler Murray is an elite NFL quarterback, and I mean that. He's a must start. As far as the running backs go, there's, you know, it's not quite as simple. There's a little ambiguity there, but here's what you need to know. Um, after a couple games where James Conner clearly took that rollover, he's been crushing the touchdown production and he was starting to get a ton more touches. People are now confused because suddenly Edmonds had more carries last game. He also had a better, he also had a good yards per carry, excuse me, but James Conner had a better yards per carry than he did. So they both had good, but Conner was even better and he he scored a touchdown. In fact, he also got all of the early game touches, and it was a 31-5 to win versus the crappy Texans. I think Edmonds' volume came simply from getting late game touches as they're trying to manage, uh, manage their time with James Conner. So I would start Conner, and I would sit Edmonds. Edmonds hasn't scored all year. Meanwhile, Conner has six touchdowns in five games. That is not by accident. Of course, you got to start DeAndre Hopkins, currently 13th in wide receiver scoring. He's got seven touchdowns in seven games, four touchdowns in the last three. There is no arguing it. I know people were slightly disappointed with him this year. The volume hasn't been there as it has been in the past, but they haven't needed him to, and the touchdowns have been there, and as long as they keep coming, he's going to be just fine. And you know what? They probably should with how good his quarterback is. As far as the other wide receivers go, I would play Christian Kirk as a wide receiver two, and A.J. Green as a wide receiver three. But you do have to understand he is very touchdown dependent. Um, in his last four games, he's basically either scored a touchdown or wasn't worth starting. So understand that he's more of a standard league play. You got to start Zach Ertz. In his first game with the offense, he finishes sixth among tight ends in weekly scoring. He had that nice, big, long touchdown. They even gave him a carry just to prove that they want to use him. However, they are going to find a way to get him the ball. However, it may be play Zach Ertz. And I'm telling you to play a lot of Cardinals players, but they are the best offense in football right now. So yeah, you should pretty much be starting all of them course they're putting up points if your receivers and your running backs and your quarterback are all scoring and your tight end scoring who else are you going to play you're going to start the kicker Matt Prater is currently second in kicker scoring and finally I would probably start the Cardinals defense this week now they're currently number one in fantasy points and they've done that because they mostly have an easy schedule but 
Not every game has been easy. And this week versus the Packers, I would tend to think this will be one of their tougher matchups. But there's something you have to know about the Packers, and that's Packers have got a lot of COVID stuff going on right now. So let's flip to the Packers. We'll start talking about that. Here's what's going on right now. Devontae Adams, Alan Lazard, and Malik Taylor. Malik, Malik, I have no idea how to say that. I'm just making stuff up as I go. Um, But all three of those wide receivers are currently on the COVID list. They need to pass two tests, two negatives before they can play in that football game. There is a very high likelihood that all three of them are out. And if any of them are out, right, if Devontae Adams is out, and even if the other two guys play, if Adams is out, that is a huge hit to that offense, and I think you can start the Cardinals' defense. Um, Of course, if Adams plays, you start him. If Adams doesn't play but Alan Lazard plays, you can start Lazard. Other than that, don't go near any of those wide receivers. Remember that Marquez Valdez-Scantling is currently on the IR. Uh, Cardinals, here's the thing. I'm going to sit Aaron Rodgers with that whole wide receiver situation. You can't trust it. And the Cardinals already give up the fourth fewest fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks. Again, this is very dependent on whether or not they play. I expect that these guys like Adams and Lazard will not play. If they do, that changes some things. But if they do, then you just go back to what you typically do, which is obviously start Adams. As far as the running backs go, Aaron Jones, he's kind of struggled lately. Only one touchdown in his last four games. But you know what? He's still number six amongst running backs in fantasy scoring. He is just fine. The Cardinals do give up the sixth fewest fantasy points to running backs. They've only given up one touchdown to a running back this year. So lower your expectations, but you still need to start Aaron Jones. I would just expect that this week he won't produce as an RB1, but more likely as a solid RB2. Uh, Robert Tanyan, he had a good week last week. Get People get excited. He is currently 23rd in tight end scoring on the year. He's actually had just two games inside the top 12. So for me, I'm going to sit him. He might get a big volume boost if Devontae Adams is out. In that case, you might consider him in a PPR league. But, you know, to be honest, for me, I'm going to avoid him as a whole. I don't think that's worth it. I'm going to sit Mason Crosby, and I'm going to sit the Packers defense. Up next, we got to talk about the Bengals at the Jets. I want to start off with the Bengals first. They have been so impressive this year and so fun to watch, especially Joe Burrow. He has developed really fast into a nice quarterback, especially for a guy who didn't even play his whole rookie season. His first couple of games this year were essentially him finishing out his rookie year. Um, But started and just really start this guy. He's been on fire lately. He's averaging 2.8 touchdowns a game over his last six games. That is a long period of time to be putting up those amount of touchdowns. Start Burrow. You also got to start Joe Mixon. He's currently the RB11 overall in fantasy PPR scoring. He scored in four straight games. He gets volume. He's the clear number one back. I trust that offense. Play Joe Mixon. You also got to play Jamar Chase. This guy has been just all world MVP. He had over 200 yards last game. He's got six touchdowns in seven games. He's on pace for 85 catches, 1,800 yards, and 15 TDs, which would be easily the best rookie wide receiver season ever, even over what Justin Jefferson did last year, which was really fun to watch if Chase continues this, which I don't know if he can. It's almost too good to be true, but it's been really fun to watch, not just because he's been productive, but it's not a volume thing. He is making the most out of every catch. Most guys who finish with 85 catches are not going to go 1,800 yards. If you go 1,800 yards, you're typically going to have probably 100 catches. Um, We got Boyd then and Higgins. Both of them have finished outside the top 40 in wide receiver scoring. So I'm going to sit Tyler Boyd and T. Higgins. They have found their clear number one guy and they have a running game and they figured out their defense. There's just not enough volume for those other two receivers to have consistent production. They're playable and they're usable, but there's risk and they're going to highly fluctuate from game to game. So understand that. Their tight end, CJ Uzuma. Here's a tough one, guys. I'm going to say sit him. And that's very confusing for some people, but here's the deal. He is 11th in tight end scoring, um, despite the fact that he has been number one twice in the last four weeks. Other than that, he has not finished inside the top 14 even once. He has had two big games where he caught lots of touchdowns and he looked great, but in all his other games, he's only going to get you two or three catches and the volume isn't there. You are rolling the dice that he scores you a touchdown, and if he doesn't, he's a bust. And I don't know if you can trust his touchdown production when there's a fairly good chance that Chase is going to get one, Burrow could run one, 
Uh, Joe Mixon could run or catch one. Boyd and Higgins are going to try to get theirs. There's just no consistency there from a tight end who over his entire career has really been quite mediocre. If there was more volume, I might trust him, but he doesn't have the volume, so I'm going to avoid sit, and I'm going to avoid and sit CJ Ozuma this week. I'm going to start their kicker, Evan McPherson. I'm going to start the Bengals' defense. Start him versus the Jets. The Jets give up the most fantasy points to opposing defenses. That's going to be a really great matchup for them this week. Flipping sides, we'll talk about the Jets. Uh, Zach Wilson is out with a strained PCL. That means their quarterback will be Mike White. Sit him, plain and simple. Uh, as far as their wide receivers go, Corey Davis and Jamison Crowder, I would sit them as well. I do not trust this offense right now at all. I would sit Tyler Croft and Ryan Griffin, their tight ends. I'd sit the Jets kicker, Matt Amendola, and their defense as well. As far as the running backs go, there's one guy there to consider, and that's Michael Carter. He's currently 34th in running back scoring, so he's outside of the top 24. That means you shouldn't start him typically, but he did finish 7th last week as he had 8 catches for over 100 yards. He is the lead back, and the other backs are questionable, so he could see some volume this week. I will tell you this, you should still sit him, but maybe in a daily fantasy league you could consider playing him if you feel like you could get him for enough of a deal. But again, in a typical fantasy roster, I'm going to bench him this week either way. I just don't trust that offense. Up next, we have the Titans at the Colts. Let's talk about the Titans first because you got to give credit where credit is due. Back-to-back wins versus the Bills and the Chiefs. They look really good right now. Of course, the Chiefs have had some issues recently, but the Chiefs are still a good football team. They're in any game against any team, and the Bills are phenomenal. So yeah, Titans are looking really good right now, and they're looking really good when their passing game isn't nearly as productive as it has been in years past. So let's talk about that. Ryan Tannehill, for me, he's a guy you should sit. I know there's some temptation there. One, because he's, you know, this team as a whole has looked better. And two, I know what a lot of people are going to say, and this is a red herring, and you need to be able to read these in fantasy. This is the second time the Titans have played the Colts this year. The first time, he threw three touchdowns. So I know a lot of people are going to key in on that and go, well, they're playing better, and he played good last time. He must be a good start now, but you need to understand this. He had less than 200 passing yards in that last game, and that is not, that's not great. You know, we always want to look at volume over production as far as consistency goes. Um, the efficiency almost never sticks around. Volume is the most reliable, independable way to evaluate things. So let's Back up the scope. What has he done in other games than that? If you take that one three touchdown game away, he is averaging less than one touchdown a game and has zero multi passing touchdown games. Now, he does have back to back games with a rushing touchdown, but we saw with Sam Darnold that ultimately is not sustainable. I would sit Ryan Tannehill. Obviously, and I'm not even going to get into it, a must start is Derrick Henry. He's the number one running back in fantasy scoring. That's all that needs to be said. You also need to start A.J. Brown. One of the funny things is as they've turned this offense around, they're still not throwing the ball a ton, but A.J. Brown has looked phenomenal. He had seven catches for 91 yards two games ago in the last game, eight catches for 133 yards and a touchdown. Now he plays the Colts, giving up the eighth most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers. A.J. Brown, start him as a wide receiver one. Now there's Julio Jones. I would actually say to sit him. He is clearly playing second fiddle and has a much smaller role and a much more minor role to play in that offense than Brown. In fact, in weekly fantasy scoring, he's averaging finishing just 50th. Now, there's some things to consider there. This is not a high-volume offense. That's hurt Julio. You know, he has got an all-star receiver there gobbling up targets. That hurts him. He's been injured. There's a lot of things there. I am not dogging on Julio. Julio Jones is still a very good wide receiver, but the fantasy production isn't there, and there's just no arguing it. So I would sit Julio Jones for now. I think by the end of the season, we'll see that he will turn it around and be a key part of this offense as we get into playoff season. But for now, sit Julio. I would sit all their tight ends, Pruitt, Ferkshire, Swaim, just all those guys bench them. I would start their kicker, Randy Bullock. Here's the thing. He missed a game this year. He's down one game from every other kicker, and he's still 10th in fantasy scoring. He's been playing really well. Finally, I would start the Titans defense. Um, They just handed it to Jacksonville, then they beat the Bills, and then they crushed that Chiefs offense with Pat Mahomes. I, I can't imagine what they could do to the Colts this week. 
Speaking of the Colts, let's talk about it. Carson Wentz has played better than ever. Career best quarterback rating of 102.8 so far this season. He had three touchdowns last week in a horrible rainy weather game where guys like Naheem Hines were dropping wide open passes on third down. Definitely, definitely love what Carson Wentz is doing. He's got four straight games with two TDs or more. The Titans give up the sixth most fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks. I would start Wentz this week as well. Jonathan Taylor is a must start after a slow beginning to the season. He's somehow already third in fantasy running back scoring. He's got five touchdowns in his last three games. Start Jonathan Taylor and sit Naheem Hines. He has struggled recently. As far as the wide receivers go, I would sit Zach Pascal, T.Y. Hilton, Paris Campbell, all those guys. I would bench them except Michael Pittman. He had 100 yards in a touchdown last game. The Titans give up the most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers. They've given up 10 touchdowns to wideouts this year. They're incredibly vulnerable, especially to a wide receiver one. The top guy in an offense, that guy tends to see a ton of volume and be very productive. So for me, Michael Pittman, definitely play him. He is really coming into his own these last few games. You can start Mawali Cox. He has four touchdowns in the last four games. But in this matchup, they give up, the opposing defense gives up the six fewest fantasy points to tight ends. And Cox is still just 17th in fantasy scoring amongst tight ends, despite the touchdown production. So I'm going to suggest that you sit him. He's not entirely unusable, but I, you know, you better be desperate in a deep league, something like that. Um, you can play Michael Badgley as a mediocre but not great start. I would probably sit him, but you can play him in deep leagues in that sort of 12 to 16 range. And finally, Colts defense are a good defense, but in a bad matchup, I would sit them this week. Up next, we have the Rams at the Texans. This one's actually a really straightforward game. Very happy to be talking about it. There's not a whole lot to get into. Matthew Stafford's a must start. He's sixth in fantasy quarterback scoring. He's got three top four finishes in the last games, last five games, excuse me. And the Texans give up the most fantasy points to opposing QBs. He's a must start. What about Daryl Henderson? Well, the Texans give up the seventh most fantasy points to running backs. In fact, they've given up eight touchdowns in seven games. And Henderson had an off game last game. He wasn't so great, but that's okay. It happens. He also had a bye week. Uh, and yet he is still the RB14 overall in PPR scoring. He's got a knack for finding the end zone, is the clear RB1. I mean, the next, really the next running back in that backfield got like two or three carries. Henderson is a must-start guy. Of course, you need to start Cooper Cup and Robert Woods. Cup is on pace for like 135 catches, 2,000 yards, 22 touchdowns. He is playing lights out. Robert Woods is playing better. Start both of those receivers. I also think you should consider starting Tyler Higby. Now, he is going up against the Texans. They give up the fourth most fantasy points to tight ends. And here's the thing. He's currently 13th in tight end scoring. So uh, season long, he's kind of missed that mark a bit. But he's been very productive. He's just missed out on the touchdowns that have been zapped away by Robert Woods, especially Cooper Cup, and, and even the running back situation there. Henderson's finding the end, end zone. So there's a lot of touchdowns being zapped up, and he's not seeing volume. Should he find the end zone or start to see more volume? Higby will be great, and I think he's going to have a good matchup this week. I wouldn't be surprised if he had six to seven catches for 70-plus yards and a touchdown. You also have to start Matt Gay, their kicker, and the Rams defense. They're going to capitalize on a great matchup versus the Texans. The Texans give up the second-most fantasy points to opposing defenses, so they are just really a turnover machine on offense right now. As far as the wide receivers go, Davis Mills is a clear must start in a, a tough matchup against a tough defense. As far as the running backs go, you need to sit all of them. Mark Ingram, David Johnson, Philip Lindsay. None of these guys are great. In fact, this is an offense that over the last five games is averaging a total of eight points per game, and none of these running backs are seeing more than 10 touches per game. Sit all of those guys. You can start Brandon Cooks. I'm going to sound like a, a, an 80s hairspray commercial Brandon Cooks, you can start. Volume does wonders, right? He is 18th in wide receiver scoring, and he doesn't have a great quarterback situation, but he's a good wide receiver who gets tons of looks his way. So again, we're going to use the 80s hair care solution uh, or phrase here. Volume does wonders for Brandon Cooks. Um, definitely start him. Sit their tight ends, Jordan Akins and Farrell Brown. Sit their kicker, Kaimi Fairbairn, and sit their defense as well. 
Like I said, that was a very clear and easy breakdown for this game. Let's get on to our next matchup. All right, now we've got these Steelers at the Browns. Let's talk about the Browns first. There's a lot of question marks there, especially with their quarterback, Baker Mayfield. He is currently questionable. Of course, all Browns, Browns fans know he missed last game, but it sounds like he should practice on Wednesday of this week. As I'm recording this, that would be tomorrow. Um, so we don't know if he ends up practicing, but if he does, that's a good sign. He's a really tough guy, and there's a fair chance that he plays. But I'll be honest with you, fair, I really, by fair, I mean like 50-50. I think if it were some other quarterbacks, I would probably just assume he won't play. Baker's a tough guy but I'm not certain he's going to play. Either way, I would sit him. There's not a ton of fantasy value there. He's just really getting it done with very little pieces. If Case Keenum starts in replacement for him, I would also sit Keenum. As far as the running backs go, Kareem Hunt is still out on the IR, and uh, Nick Chubb is currently questionable with that calf injury, though uh, Josina Anderson reported um, that he is supposed to come back and play in week eight, barring any setbacks in practice. So be paying attention to that. Of course, if Nick Chubb is on the field, he is a must-start running back. Now, if Hunt and Chubb are out again, Dearness Johnson is a must-start. Last week with them out, he was the number four overall running back in weekly scoring. He had 24 touches for 168 yards and a touchdown. That being said, with Hunt out and Chubb in, you might want to play Dearness Johnson anyways as Hunt and Chubb were getting it done together when Baker was on the field. So if Baker plays and Chubb plays, you can still start Johnson. If Chubb is out, you can start Johnson either way as he will be a a solid volume option. I'm going to sit all Browns wide receivers. The guy who you could start there will be Jarvis Landry, but Jarvis Landry is either going to get Case Keenum a backup quarterback or you know a banged up injured starter in Baker Mayfield. I'm not going anywhere near it. I'd sit their tight ends, Njoku and Hooper. I'm going to sit their kicker, Chase McLaughlin, and I will sit the Browns defense. You know, they're a good defense, but they're averaging just one fantasy point over the last three games, and that just comes down to injuries, man, and everything going on with that team. Taking a look at the other side, Ben Roethlisberger, man, currently 27th in quarterback scoring. He's been a disappointment. Continue to sit him as you have all season long. Of course, Najee Harris is quite the opposite story of Ben Roethlisberger. Roethlisberger's old and underproducing. Harris is young and overproducing. He's insane. He's currently fifth in running back scoring, despite the fact that he has already had a bye week when many teams have not. Um, In his last five games, his worst performance was 19 fantasy points. That's how good he has been. Start Harris as an RB1, especially in PPR leagues. As far as the wide receivers go, Juju Smith-Schuster is still out on the IR. And Claypool, really, the interesting thing about this is that Claypool, he's missed two games, um, but if he hadn't, he was on pace. If he hadn't missed those games and he played the seven, he'd be he's actually on pace to be 25th in wide receiver scoring. So Claypool's been all right. I think you can play him as a wide receiver three, but he is extremely up and down. And considering what happened last game, I would actually bump him down and consider sitting him depending on what league you're in. The must-start guy there is Deontay Johnson. Despite having a bye week, despite missing a game with injury, he was already top 24 in wide receiver scoring. He has been phenomenal. In fact, I'm going to call him a high-end wide receiver too, and he gets a huge boost now that Juju is out. Here's the thing that makes me question the production of Chase Claypool. Juju goes down, and we don't know what his role is going to look like in that offense with Juju out. And instead of Claypool stepping up, he actually took a back seat And Pat Freermouth, he had the big day. Seven targets, seven catches, 58 yards. Freermouth had a monster performance with volume there. Um, I think he is too risky to start. I wouldn't start Pat, but keep your eye on him. If he has another good game, he might be doing what Kyle Pitts did, where he emerged out of the blue. I would sit Boswell versus the Browns, giving up the fifth fewest fantasy points to kickers. And I am going to start the Steelers' defense if Baker Mayfield is out, and especially if Nick Chubb is out. All right, up next, we have the Eagles at the Lions. Let's start off with the Eagles first. We got to highlight Jalen Hurts. He has continued to produce week after week. He is currently fifth in scoring. He hasn't had a single week outside of the top 12, which means he's been startable every single game. And the Lions, they give up the 10th most fantasy points to QBs. That is a must-play matchup right there for Jalen Hurts. As far as the running backs go, Miles Sanders. Now, here's the thing. He is currently questionable, and although he hasn't been ruled out for this game, it seems very clear to me that's coach speak. 
and I do not expect him to play. Because I don't expect him to play, Kenneth Gainwell is a guy you should consider starting. Gainwell was the 14th running back in weekly scoring last week with Miles Sanders, or with that situation, excuse me, struggling here to read my notes. Anyways, now this week, if he is without Miles Sanders, he goes against the Lions, giving up the sixth most fantasy points to opposing running backs. They've allowed nine touchdowns to running backs on the year and three receiving touchdowns to running backs in the last two games. Kenneth Gainwell will be a must start. If Miles Sanders does play, however, I would probably sit both of them. It's a very messy situation. You can consider starting Miles Sanders, but he hasn't been terribly productive, so I would consider him a low-end RB2. As far as the wide receivers go, the only guy to play there is Devonta Smith, and even he is currently just 37th in wide receiver scoring on the year. And that comes down to the fact that he's been pretty good, but they're not throwing the ball a lot. His quarterback has been good for fantasy, good with his legs, but not throwing it as well as they would like. And ultimately, he only has one touchdown on the year. But the Lions gave up three touchdowns to receivers last game. I think this is going to be a good game for Smith. I would start Devonta Smith in this matchup. You can also consider playing Dallas Godert in his first game without Zach Ertz. He caught three balls of five targets, had 70 yards, and even had a two-point conversion. So I like Dallas Goder. I would play him as an 8 to 12 starter this week as, you know, kind of that lower end, tight end one. I would sit their kicker, Jake Elliott, and I'm going to sit the Eagles defense. Taking a look now at the Lions, you got to sit Jared Goff. He has just one touchdown in the last three games. He has been brutal. Sit Jared Goff. You need to start DeAndre Swift, though, and this surprised me as I did my research. He's currently number two in running back scoring. How did that even happen? Uh, Like last game, he had eight catches for 96 yards and a touchdown. He almost had 100 yards receiving alone. He is a PPR monster, and even in standard leagues, it's keeping him on the field, getting him yards, and helping him score. Must start DeAndre Swift. Again, he is the number two overall running back in fantasy scoring. I'm going to sit all Lions receivers. Again, when your quarterback throws one touchdown in three games, that already tells you what you need to know. Now you play the Eagles, who give up the fifth fewest fantasy points to wideouts. That is a nightmare matchup right there. You need to start TJ Hawkinson, however. If they're going to shut down those wide receivers, he could see a big day. Now, he struggled there for a few games, but he bounced back. He is fourth in tight end scoring, and the Eagles gave up the seventh most fantasy points to tight ends. Their linebackers struggle a little bit there in coverage, so I would play Hawkinson. Uh, You could start Austin Siebert at the kicker position there. Very risky, but he does offer some upside. I would probably sit him, however, and I would sit the Lions defense. All right, now we got to talk about the 49ers at the Bears. Uh, Not going to be a pretty matchup there, but we got to talk about it, so let's just get into it. Bears first. Justin Fields is a must sit. He's got just three touchdowns on the year. He's just, he just really not looked that good. You got to wonder what's going on there with that entire situation, though, the coaching staff as well. Matt Nagy, you wonder if there's a coaching problem and not just a player problem. It seems like a lot of players are struggling to succeed in this offense, except one. While David Montgomery has been out on IR, Khalil Herbert has shined. And here's the thing. We wondered last game because Herbert played well his first two games, right? He has 75 yards on 4.2 yards per carry, and then he has 97 yards uh, on the ground and 15 yards and even scored a touchdown, 5.1 yards per carry. That was his second game versus Green Bay. So we wonder in his third game, Damien Williams comes back. Does that hurt his touches? They also play Tampa Bay, the best run defense in the league. What happens? Oh, yeah. He has five catches of five targets for 33 yards in the air, and that's nothing compared to his 18 carries for 100 yards. That's 5.6 yards per carry. Khalil Herbert is the real deal. He is a must start. I would sit all Bears wide receivers. Their best wide receiver right now is Darnell Mooney, who is currently 46th in wide receiver scoring, making him a wide receiver five or whatever, or maybe a low end four. It doesn't really matter. Sit all those guys. Cole Met has played better at tight end. He had five targets, four catches, and 49 yards two games ago. And last game, he saw six targets, catching five of them for 43 yards. So he's getting better, but he's not quite there yet. I would still sit him, but he's one of those guys to keep in the back of my mind. I want to pay attention to him, watch how he develops, and we'll see what happens next year. You know, big things can happen, and there's a reason we pay attention to these little things. Like, what if suddenly the offseason happens 
and all the legal stuff goes away. Deshaun Watson ends up, Deshaun Watson plays. He ends up playing for the Bears. Now you've got a stud quarterback there, and Cole Mack could shine at tight end. Like, you don't know what could happen. It's just one of those silly examples, but something to pay attention to. Uh, I'd sit their kicker, Cairo Santos, and I would sit the Bears defense. Now taking a look at the other side, Jimmy Garoppolo will be playing quarterback. I would sit him, but he has had a positive impact on that team. Both Debo Samuel came, uh, he had a good week coming off of that bye week. 11 targets, 7 catches for 100 yards in the touchdown. I would sit Debo Samuel and, or I would start Debo Samuel, excuse me, and I would sit all other 49ers receivers. But he's also had a, or Garoppolo has also had a very positive impact on that running game. Here's the thing. Eli Mitchell was 13th in weekly running back scoring, putting him on the verge of an RB1. He was just right there, almost did it. He had 18 touches for 107 yards. That's 5.9 yards per carry and a touchdown. The next best running back had three carries. Eli Mitchell is the starting running back. He is productive. He is a must start, a high end RB2, if not a running back one. The thing that hurt him before was one, the injury and everything going on with that offense. And then two, he did play one game where Lance was quarterback and Lance ran the ball like 18 times and that really hurt Mitchell's value. Now he is fine. Definitely play him. Kittle is still on the IR. I would sit him in his backup. I would sit the kicker, Joey Sly. And, and you know, the 49ers defense is an okay start versus the Bears. They're not a great fantasy defense, but the Bears are a terrible offense, giving up the fifth most fantasy points to opposing defenses. So you can start them this week. I don't expect huge things, but they're a very safe play. All right, up next, we get to talk about a fun divisional matchup, Panthers at Falcons. Let's start off with the Panthers. They, they've struggled recently. The loss of Christian McCaffrey has really hurt this team. So let's start off with Sam Darnold. This is a great matchup. The Falcons give up the third most fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks. Many people will be tempted to play Darnold. I'm going to say sit him. He has just two touchdowns over his last three games. And like I said, that offense just isn't the same without Christian McCaffrey. They also lost Dan Arnold, who, you know, was a actually fairly solid piece to that offense and was probably his number two weapon. Zilstra also went down. Robbie Anderson, there's just not been chemistry there. He's been a bust. I would sit Sam Darnold this week. I do think you should start Hubbard, though. He has been pretty darn productive filling in for McCaffrey. He's currently 17th in running back scoring since taking over, which makes him a solid RB2. And the Falcons give up the eighth most fantasy points to opposing running backs. In fact, They've given up five TDs to backs in their last four games. So Chubb should be a, a solid volume and consistent safe option. Maybe not the most upside, but he's going to get his touches and find the end zone. He'll be great. DJ Moore, he is like everyone else in this offense. Like I said, he's seen a slight dip in production the last three games, but he's still eighth overall in wide receiver scoring. He's still a solid wide receiver one. Hopefully he finds the end zone this week in a good matchup. I would sit their tight ends, Tommy Tremble and Ian Thomas. I would sit their kicker, Zane Gonzalez, and I would sit the Panthers defense this week. Talking about the Falcons now, what about Matt Ryan? That's a quarterback I actually like. People, he started the year rough, so I think people are really sleeping on, sleeping on him. Excuse me, really struggling with my words here. But here's what people don't see. He has three straight games where he has finished inside the top 12 in weekly scoring. That's three straight weeks you should have started him. Plus, the Panthers give up the 13th most fantasy points to opposing QBs, and that's on a slightly easy schedule. Not super easy, but slightly easy schedule. I think Matt Ryan's going to have a good day. They've really developed some pieces there, like Cordero Patterson at running back slash receiver. He is currently eighth in running back scoring. He's got six touchdowns in six games. You need to start Cordero Patterson. That being said, lower your expectations a little bit because the Panthers do allow the fewest fantasy points to opposing running backs. So kind of understand that he may not have his best performance this year, but you still need to start him. As far as the wide receivers go, you can play both Calvin Ridley and Russell Gage as wide receiver threes. They're just not getting it done like they used to, at least Calvin Ridley. Uh, you know, we'll see if he turns things around. But to right now, he's really the kind of the third option on that team, surprisingly. Probably the number one option now has got to be Kyle Pitts. Two games ago, he had nine catches for 119 yards in the touchdown. Last game, he had seven for 163 yards. He has exploded. Start Kyle Pitts. I would sit their kicker, Young Way Koo, and I would sit the Falcons defense this week as well. Lastly, guys, let's get into one more game. Dolphins at Bills. 
This is the simplest matchup that I'm going to talk about all day. It is so straightforward. Josh Allen's a must start. He's got 14 touchdowns in his last four games, and his quarterback rating is way over 100. He is phenomenal. Play him. You got to play Zach Moss versus the Dolphins, giving up the fourth most fantasy points to opposing running backs. Now, the last two games have been sorted down for Zach Moss, um, but he is still 29th in running back scoring despite missing two games and having the off games. He is just fine. He's going to find the end zone, have a great day, start him, and sit Devin Singletary. Start def, start Stefan Diggs in that range of wide receiver one to two right on that gap there. You can start Emmanuel Sanders as a wide receiver two, and you can play Beasley as a risky PPR receiver three. Uh, you should start their kicker Dawson Knox, especially in standard leagues. Start their kicker Tyler Bass. He is currently number one in fantasy scoring. And start the Bills defense, who are number two in fantasy scoring. The Bills are electric right now, one of the best teams in football, and there's tons of fantasy value there. So definitely start all of those guys pretty much. On the other side, we see a team in the Dolphins who, who are struggling. Now, in the waiver wire video, I talked about how impressed I have been with Tua. Tua's played really good in his first two games back from injury. But go back to his first game of the season versus the Patriots. He struggled in that game because he played a good defense and his offense didn't give him enough weapons. That's what's going to happen this week against the Bills who give up the fewest fantasy points to opposing QBs. I would sit to as much as I like him. You got to sit all Dolphins running backs. If you play one, play Gaskins in PPR. As far as the wide receivers, Jalen Waddell is the only guy to consider, and he, he is a must-start. He dominates the large majority of the share of that passing attack. Start Mike Gesicki, sit their kicker Sanders, and sit their defense as well. Man, that is going to be the quickest breakdown I have ever done for a game, but it's really that simple. There was not a lot to break down there. I like Tua. I like this offense. But the Bills are just going to freight train them. I have a feeling it's going to be a very Bills-heavy matchup, and... You know, I think history's really proven that that Dolphins offense is especially vulnerable to very good defenses. They can play great in some easy matchups, but, you know, they, they don't tend to handle the pressure. You know, you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. That seems to be what that Dolphin, Dolphins offense is right now. But that's my breakdown for that, guys. As always, we really appreciate your support. Leave a comment and we will do our best to answer it as fast as we can. You guys have a great day and God bless.